Hello my friends and welcome back to the next installment of the version 5 faction overviews for Divide and Conquer. This week returning as the realm of Lorien, or as you may call him, the Galathrim. The Lothlorien, I guess is another name for it, the Golden Wood. We are the elves of the Golden Wood this week. Now there are only a few more faction overviews left, such as Mordor, Rune, Rohan, and the Woodland Realm, and I'm fairly certain it's in that order, and there might be another faction in there, but as I glance at the minimap, I don't think I'm missing anyone else on the list currently. So, we are very close to finishing the version 5 overview videos, at which case afterwards I will be planning to start a new campaign, and my current consideration is actually the Kingdom of Dale, because they are getting new unit visuals and a new script. Now the details on the script, I have zero clue on to what it's about. It's behind closed doors and it's not something I've actually asked the development team about. So I'm just going to let that one continue to be in development and not bother them while they figure out what's going on with Dale. But that is in the future, probably a month out or so after this video releases. So anyway, we'll continue on with the overview. So the... Elves of Lorien as you are. Well, you start off with two regions at the turn uh, at the beginning of the campaign. Karis Galathon here, the capital of Lorien and the Golden Wood, and the town of Limhir, I guess I should say large town. Now the what was Karen Amroth or Seren Amroth, I think it's I think you pronounce it like you would a K, so Karen Amroth. Uh, has been replaced with a fort which has its model tied to your capital city here so if you go out of view of the city it will just become like a normal fort visual that's just a limitation of the engine but it has a unique model as long as you've got Kyrus Galathon in view you can see that very very nice kind of texture there I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of this method of changing the way forts look so you have two cities at the start Kyrus Galathon his unique building being the Mirror of Galadriel, which will give you an experience bonus, upkeep slots, and increase in tradable goods. Also, you get your Diplomat, and that's your only real unique building that you have, but it is a solid one to have in your capital. Limhir is pre-developed with Dirt Paths, a Practice Range, Hall of Song, Artist Studio, and Land Clearance, while Karis Galathon has Roads, Hall of Song, the Barracks, the Archery Range, the Inn, the Artist Studio, and Land Clearance. So, Decently well-developed capital and not too shabby over here at Lim here. You can immediately get some recruitment going on here. Now I'm going to talk about the generals and the characters in a little bit here because I have a save where I have all of the custom bodyguards and they're just kind of lined up here and that's where I think it's better to talk about them. So, but for your starting armies, I will say you have Lord Celeborn, Lorian Archers, Lorian Warders here in your capital and High March Warden Haldir with a unit of Archers in Lim here, so fairly small starting forces, but your two generals that you start with are very, very powerful, especially Lord Celeborn. So, for nearby expansion, you have a few options. To the north, you have the town of Arui, which is occupied by Northmen, or the men of the Anduin Vale. I personally wish it was occupied more by orcs, it just feels a little gross to send your elves to go massacre like a thousand humans over here in Arui, but maybe they're bandits, maybe they're just bad people, maybe they've fallen underneath the shadow of Sauron and the shadow of Dol Guldur over here, so maybe they're just evil people and that's why you have to take them out. To the south, orcs have taken over Edrykarn, there is orc hunters, orc fighters, and somewhere in here there is a rebel orc general, or at least a bodyguard, not a general himself, but there's just a random bodyguard somewhere over here with another unit of, I believe, orc fighters, so just something to keep an eye out for. They will be out in the field. To the east, Aknadion is another rebel village, though it will be taken by Dol Guldur very quickly. And to the south, you have Rockburg, though these two settlements are going to be swept up by Rohan very early in the game. You most likely won't be taking these two unless you just bull rush it with your starting forces. That is it for your nearby expansion. Now, I will tell you early on in this video, do look out for Isengard now, because Isengard has the Fangorn camp. I started a short campaign where I played about a dozen turns, and I was attacked by Isengard just by a very small force, but a force nonetheless they sent from Fangorn to the Limlight Fields because it does border these two regions. So that is something to be wary of. You don't just have enemies over the Anduin River at Dorgaldur. You have the potential for Isengard to send some forces at you. Although in my experience in that one anecdotal 12 turn campaign, they only sent a couple of units and then I didn't see them again. But just something to be aware of. You are not, you don't want to leave Lim here defenseless is what I'm trying to say. 
Other neighbors you have to the north, of course, you have the Anduin Vale and the Dwarves of Khazad Doom to your west, who do keep the goblins out of your territory. Though, should the dwarves ever fall, the goblins will probably start to pour into the Golden Wood, but that does give you the option to take over Moria for yourself and the riches that it ensues, such as the Mithril Mines. You can make a lot of money if you ever do take Khazad Doom, and there's always a small chance that the dwarves will get kicked out, and that is your chance to swoop in there. To the farther north, there is Goblin Town. You may occasionally see some goblins coming down that way, though they'll typically be busier with both the High Elves and the Anduin Vale. Your chief enemy will be Dol Guldur, but they also have enemies in the Anduin Vale and the Woodland Realm and even Dale and even possibly Dorwinian. So you will be fighting Dol Guldur primarily, but they are not going to be solely focused on your faction. So you have a bit of breathing room as the Realm of Lothlorien. So... They're also a very defensive position here. There are only a few crossings into the eastern side here. One is to the south of the river here, bordering Kyrus Galathon, and the other is to the north. So there are only three entrance points to this region, which are these three bridges. So you can easily defend your um, region. And because you're an elf nation, having very powerful archers and fighting bridge battles is Probably the best thing you can do and hope for. I mean, any nation, it's great to have it, but given your sheer range and accuracy with archers, it's a set um, especially powerful for the elves. I'm going to go ahead and load it now over to a save, in which case I have all of the characters lined up. This will be a little bit further in the campaign here. I'll cut to this. So here we are on a save, in which I am much farther in the campaign to have unlocked all of these characters here. First of all, we'll talk about your faction leader, Lord Celeborn. Lord Celeborn is an amazing general. He's a very powerful bodyguard in the Berio Eaton Delaith. They are insanely powerful archers and spears. Spears with 19 attack nonetheless. 33 defense, a 6 shield, 16 armor. They will talk... I'm probably, I might as well just talk about them here rather than the later part of the video. They are just exceptional, exceptional elite units. The Burial Ingolith are unique to Celeborn, but if you reject the Alliance script, you can train more of them. But if you accept that, then Celeborn will be your only unit that you have with that very powerful bodyguard. Now, Celeborn has a ton of hit points, six from his biography. Galadriel is represented in his retinue. He is the Lord of Lorien, and he comes with a special ability being Swiftness, which is a very short usage short-term ability but it does give you it reduces your fatigue a lot gives you combat effectiveness allied effectiveness and it gives a chance to stun the enemy for a few seconds which is in fact it's a hundred percent chance to stun them for 30 seconds which can be useful it's a little short-lived but it is still a very powerful ability most likely you're going to be using Celeborn a lot offensively he does not get free upkeep so you might as well use him. Either send him into Karen Amroth or use him out in the battlefield. That 625 upkeep, it is quite hurtful, but he is your best tool for taking the first few villages. He can basically solo the town of Erui. He could solo, or almost solo, the um, castle of the Thrykarn with all those orc fighters there. He can do a lot by himself, but it is, it is still a good idea to keep him supported so he doesn't get like overwhelmed by armor-piercing orc maulers, which you are likely to fight a lot in the campaign. Our next general here, High March Warden Haldir. He is your second starting general, as I talked about earlier. He has the Light of Elbereth, which is quite a powerful special ability as well. What I like a little more, because it does have three charges versus the one on swiftness. Extra effectiveness and gives you extra morale. The morale is likely not to be a real factor in your battles, especially if Haldir is leading you. But the extra effectiveness can be useful. He has plenty of hit points himself, and he has a Galadrim Archer's it's his bodyguard. They are quite powerful, as you can see their stats here, though they are bloated as he does have eight chevron points right now, which is a little higher than it actually is. They also have locked morale, so they can't be broken. So Haldir and Celeborn are going to be key for your early game expansion, taking these other towns while preserving losses, so you don't lose too many of your regular tier one infantry or archers. Next off, if you are to take five regions, and it is after turn 10, so 11 and beyond, you will unlock uh, N. Premi, and I don't know where he really comes from. He has a bit of a biography saying that he was an artist. I don't actually know if... I don't believe he's like an actual character in the lore, if he's just a divided, a conquer uh, creation there. I don't... I tried to look up N. Premi, I didn't see anything, so... I didn't do a deep dive or anything, so he might be there somewhere in, in the, in the you know, legendarium. But N. Premi, 
you get him, he does come with a unit of Galadrum Swordsmen, so you have both the Galadrum Archers, uh, sorry, you pronounce it with a T-A, so Galathrim. You have both Galathrim Archers and Galathrim Swordsmen. He is quite powerful, there was 17 attack, just a solid infantry general. And if the incentive is to play mostly defensively, take a few regions, and then you'll get Enthremi who can help you attack on the offense. He's very good in melee, good at taking sieges out or fighting Dolgaldur infantry or anyone else you have to fight. The next two generals you will get after having eight regions or also having dual Goldur. And I forget which one is which. In fact, let me, let's just check this here. There's Orofin and Rumil. So if you get, if you hold dual Goldur and have 30 turns of pass, you will get Rumil. And if 30 turns of pass and you hold eight or more regions, you get Orofin. So whichever order you do that in, it just needs to be turn 31 or beyond. Both of them have the same general and same ability. They both come with swiftness, and they both have Lothlorien March Wardens as their bodyguard. So not as good defensively, but they are your greatest archers, and you get two of them to help you lead your forces here against the war um, in the east. So now we'll move on to... We'll talk about the buildings real quick before we get into scripts. Having an Elven Nation, you have two tiers of stables. The first tier will give you scouts, and the second tier will give you the Heather Bean. For your barracks, you have three levels of that. Tier 1 will give you the Warder, Sentries, and Girthenen. The Tier 2 Guard Barracks will add Yavanna's Chosens and Sentinels of Karen and Roth. And the Tier 3 Army Barracks will give you Galathrum Guards and the Galathrum Swordsmen, which are very, very powerful units. Your Archery Range, Tier 1 will give you Lothlorian Archers. You'll get Girdleg and the March Wardens at the Tier 2 Archery Range. And at the Marksman Range, you will add Galathrum Archers. And if you reject the Elven Union, this is where you will train Celeborn's bodyguard, the Burial E in the lathe. That is it for your military infrastructure. You can get the tier 4 smithing here with the armor, so you don't get crazy high smithing or anything like that. And then everything else is pretty standard. You have two guilds, the Warrior's Guild, giving you bladesmiths and master bladesmiths for a extra melee weapon bonus. Good luck getting those in the current iteration of the mod. It's unfortunate that they are quite difficult to attain unless you take an enemy region. And then you also have the Dance Guilds, which will give you Population Growth, Law, and Culture. I don't quite remember what the trigger is for these guilds. I want to say it's probably the Entertainment and Cultural Buildings, but I don't actually know at the moment what the trigger is to get the Dance Guilds. There was a time when you would just be offered guilds all the time in like version 4.5 or version 4 and before, but in version 5 it is much more difficult. So if you get one, it's a great building but it might be kind of hard to actually achieve. It can be really useful, though, if you take, like, Dorgal Dur and get offered the Dance Guild there, as it will help you take care of, like, Law and give you a Culture Increase bonus. So it can be useful, and you will most likely be offered one of these once you do capture Dorgal Dur anyways, depending on how late it is in the campaign and the points that the AI has attributed for their guilds in that settlement. Other unique buildings, I can talk about them here. It is the Sylvan Gathering, the Yavanna's Garden, which is only available if you reject the Elven Union. Now, it says it gives you 10 recruitment slots. The max is actually 9, so that's misleading. It will give you 3 free upkeep units, extra trade, and then all of these global effects here, though the amplification doesn't appear to really work that well, if at all. But it will give you free upkeep globally and extra recruitment slots. So if you don't have like a Hall of Song in, a, in like a town, you will at least have one base recruitment slot anywhere. This includes villages, Though you can't train anything in villages as an elven nation, which is a little bit unfortunate. But the rest of the bonuses are very nice. And finally, you can also get the Ents from this building. Now, you can only build Yavanna's Garden in three places. Being Karis Galathon, uh, sorry, Galathon, I keep catching myself on that. Dogolder and Thran Duil's Hall. So those are the only places you can create that building because it is just so, so incredibly powerful, though. I doubt you'll ever actually make use of nine recruitment slots at once, but hey, maybe you will. Maybe you'll try to train a full army in like three turns and you have every single recruitment slot filled. It can be useful, but given the low availability of troops anyway, you'll most likely just be recruiting and waiting for um, replenishment anyway over time. And that is it for the unique buildings. So now we'll talk about the scripts, and for that there is of course the Elven Union, and the one I talked about for your characters here, though that's pretty minor. 
The Elven Union script will happen at turn 46. You will be given, as long as you are allied to the Woodland Realm, anytime after turn 45, you will receive a message that one of the Woodland Realm diplomats, forget his name, there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of story there, a little bit, bit of fun stuff you can read. He will ask and say, hey, this is very urgent. Uh, there's basically a growing threat. We wish to hold council uh, with the Elves of Lorien. The following turn, you'll be warned that there is an incoming attack by Mortar that will happen in one year. So four turns after that, which should occur on turn 50. And I'll show that army shortly here. In fact, I might as well load that now. You will be asked, do you wish to accept the aid of the Woodland Realm? And if you do, you will pay 3,000 gold coins and be given four units of Lorien archers to help you defend your city, or you can reject it and stand on your own. Now, the army that attacks isn't meant to just destroy Karis Galathon. It's meant to be more of just a swarm battle, but it's not an incredibly powerful army, as you'll see here. So we attack at Uglot is the besieger. He has 3,000 orcs under his command, but it is basically just trash. He does have a unit of trolls, orc band, orc raiders, and orc archers. So nothing too powerful. This isn't meant to be like a battle where you are at risk of losing your capital. It's meant to more just be a fun little battle and defensive siege that you'll do at Karis Galathon, which is a great settlement to defend from. So defeat this army, accept the help, or reject it. It is up to you. Following that battle, you will have to send your diplomat to Thranduil's Halls, or vice versa if you were doing the Woodland Realm version. This is basically the same thing. In which case, you will be given a decision. If you accept the aid, you will join with the Woodland Realm. You were unionized into one nation, so you will take all of their cities, generals, towns, and all of their units. And if you reject the aid, you will break your alliance. You will not go to war. You will be neutral. And instead, you will be given the opportunity to build the Ivana's Garden. So I'll go ahead and show the units that you can get when you are allied to the Woodland Realm. So here we are with a save, in which case I have unionized with the Woodland Realm. And as you can see, you get all of their armies, all of their units, like I had just said. Additionally, for your recruitment purposes, you will unlock the following units. From the stables, you will get the Woodland Realm Horse Archers. And from your barracks, you will unlock the Elven's King Axe Guard, the Elven King's Gate Guard, and the Mythir Ethawire. So you get four units to kind of plug up some gaps, you might say, in your roster. So this gives you a decent shielded and sword infantry unit, though around the same strength as the Sentinels. They're actually, are they better than the Sentinels? They are actually significantly better. Eh, they're about the same as the Sentinels, more or less. It gives you extra flavor. You get the two Elven Skings units. You get the My Theory, the Wire, giving you a solid infantry armor-piercing option. In fact, one of your few armor-piercing options. And then you get some Horse Archers, which you wouldn't get normal. Now, you don't get any of the fancy Woodland Realm Archers. Though, if Legolas is alive, you will have the Hinny Dower. And additionally, from Thranduil, he retains his bodyguard as well. So you get the Arid Hereth. As well as any other basic bodyguard that is around... A third air, this Elven's King Gate Guard bodyguard over here, and just whoever else happens to be around with the Woodland Realm at that time. So you get some significant bodyguards, and you, of course, unionize the nations, but you don't get the entire roster, though any other units the Woodland Realm have, they don't disappear. So all these Woodland Warriors and Woodland Spearmen and stuff that you don't get to recruit yourself, you still have access to. And then their barracks will transition to train your units instead. So you don't get the full roster, but you do get four units and their lands as well. And of course, I've showed the Yavanna's Garden. So if you take that, you get the Ents. You don't unionize, but you can train the Barrio Ingolite from the archery range. So I guess just general campaign strategy and advice I can give before we roll into the unit overview. I would say... Try to take a Rui and take a Raikarn first. Those should be your first two expansion options. Be prepared for the Isengard threat to send some units up to limb here. Be prepared to defend that. And around that same time or so, then the first ten or so turns, you may see Dorgaldur send some forces up into the lower Gladden fields through the crossing here. So be prepared to play a defensive campaign, defending your borders on the west until you have defeated the first few armies that come in. And then once you have a bit of a foothold 
a good garrison setup and a few extra units go ahead and start moving in over to Aknod Eon. This would be my next expansion recommendation. Conquer this fort and be prepared to start besieging Dol Guldur. The sooner you can get the Citadel itself, the better, as this will cripple Dol Guldur's recruitment capabilities, especially for their more elite units. Now, they will still have plenty of armies left in the deeper Mirkwood Bows, but they will be preoccupied with their other neighbors, the Anduin, the Woodland Realm and Dale, and potentially even Dorwinian. Do be aware of Dor Nauerhawk over here. This is a predominant castle that Dorgaldur will control at turn two, and they will be sending a lot of units out from this place. They'll be building it up for military, and they will spam, spam, spam your direction. You are elves. Your biggest weakness or biggest concern, I would say, is just you have to balance generally a weaker economy out here with expensive troops and limited recruitment. But once you get rolling, as long as you're careful in your battles and you don't take too many casualties, you should do all right. I can't stress this enough. Use your generals to the best of your ability. Use Haldir, use Celeborn. Once you get and and Premi, use him as well. Use them predominantly to take the damage, do most of the fighting, and save your other units until they're absolutely necessary for them to engage. You can skirmish very effectively with elven archers as they can outrun anything that the goblins have or that the orcs will throw your way. Your biggest safety concern, I would say, your biggest threat in battles is going to be wargs. So you're going to want to have spearmen ready to fight the wargs, ideally in a shield wall so they don't take a big amount of damage on the charge. If you don't have that option, you have enough movement speed with your units that you can run the opposite direction run away from a charging work pack and they basically their charge will get interrupted they might get a couple of kills but it's much better than having them run full charge into your entire like archer line or your swordsman line you don't want that happening so just be careful of the wargs try to take them down if you can and skirmish to the best of your abilities and you shouldn't really have too many issues in terms of difficulty i wouldn't say lothlurian is too difficult Granted, my current campaign, I'm only like a dozen turns in. Your biggest threat would be if the goblins do take over and push into your land and Isengard decides they want to focus you and Dorgolder decides to focus you, things could be difficult. Um, but if that doesn't happen, you should be okay. The other worst case scenario would be Mordor rapidly expanding into Gondor and then pushing north. You might simply just not have the recruitment capabilities at that point with your smaller kind of boundaries here like you have you don't have too many settlements that you can really pull from if mortar gets a big foothold and it takes you a while to really expand out and set up your military infrastructure you might get overwhelmed then but you have a roster that is very defensive and very well set for massacring orcs especially with your elite archers and caliborn is just an absolute world beater he is incredibly incredibly powerful so use your bodyguards well one last tip I would say, grab the stables pretty much as soon as you can. You're going to want to get some Lorian scouts out. They're going to help you a lot with both just chasing down enemies easier, running into Dorgolder archers, doing hammer and anvils. They're going to be a great unit and you're going to want to recruit those very, very quick in your campaign. Just to help you fight and mop up the enemy just that little bit quicker. So now we'll go ahead and switch it over to the battle map. And welcome to the battle map. So we're going to do things in a different order this time. We'll talk about the archers because the general's bodyguard is an archer unit himself, followed by the infantry and then the cavalry. So starting off with your general's bodyguard, the default is going to be the Elberth's Sentinels, 38 man strong or elf strong bodyguard, 11 melee, 11 missile. So tied there in utility with 28 defense, though all that defense is armor and defense skill. They don't really have any defense against armor-piercing missiles, so be wary of the goblin javelin man that Dorgolder can throw at you. They could do some damage to this bodyguard, but they should be all right. I mean, 15 armor is still a ton. Locked morale, so they will not be broken. Exceptional accuracy, 210 meter range with 32 arrows. Don't expect them to have the same damage output as some of your other archers, just due to the limited number of elves in the unit. But they are still quite powerful in their own regard. A very, I'd say, 
balanced but powerful bodyguard. And sometimes I like I just like how you can have an infantry bodyguard, small and elite, and that's really what a bodyguard should be at the end of the day. But this is medieval too. Bodyguards are just insanely powerful, so. You won't have too many of the Elgrith Sentinels running around in the early game as you will have Haldir, Celeborn, and Premi. You will most likely be using them as governors and defenders of settlements, while your unique bodyguards who you can't get free upkeep for are out fighting in the field. So, like the way I would be playing the campaign, I wouldn't really be using any of the Elgrith Sentinels out in the field leading my armies. I'd have one of the many many unique bodyguards doing all of that work but that's just me of course everyone is free to play in their own way but that's how i would recommend doing it so for your tier one archery range you have the lorian archers five melee six missile attack and 10 total defense three charge isn't terrible um but do keep in mind these are your weakest in terms of melee for anything in your roster the lorian archers are the weakest there they actually are stated to have low accuracy, but that is low for elves, which is different than low for, say, humans or low for orcs. Like, this is much better than low for humans. It's probably, like, average or high for a human unit. Um, but I think they might even be the only elven, like, unit where it actually just specifically says low accuracy. 180 meter range, 20 missiles. They are basically more or less militia archers, um, at least to the elven at standard. Do notice the gray cloaks and the silver you'll see that a lot in the lorian roster and that is because the malorn trees their bark is actually silver so the gray cloaks silver cloaks help them to blend in in their environment so that explains the silver and gray color schemes that the uh, elves of the galathrum use besides the higher tiers which get into like very ornate kind of plate armor whatever whatever you might call it scale plate but lorian archers Best used in a loose formation, skirmishing with the enemy, focus firing on things like orc maulers or orc archers or wargs if you see them. Just keep them at range since they don't have too much defense against archers themselves at only four. They're actually decent in melee, I guess you could say. Six defense skill is pretty solid, but against enemy missiles, they will die relatively fast and obviously don't let them get charged by a warg archer. Do note that very high movement speed modifier, 114%. They are very swift on the battlefield. Now, for the next two units in the archer range at tier two, you get two specialists being the March Wardens and the Gerveleg. Actually, I had to quickly test and see exactly how the Gerveleg works because I had forgotten their specialty. So the Gerveleg, 11 melee, 14 missile attack, 11 total defense, You'll notice they have a very short range, 70 meter range with only four missiles that they are AP, but let me tell you that four is actually 12. Each archer will fire three shots at once, meaning they are excellent, excellent assassins, though they only have a few shots that they can run through, but then they're okay in melee afterwards. So it's a bit high fantasy shooting three arrows at once, but they are quite quite powerful the damage that they can do they are troll killers they are heavy infantry killers they are cavalry killers bodyguard killers use them to do close range sniping basically imagine what javelins would do but then triple the amount of missiles that you're throwing at once that is the gerbil like they can do a ton of damage but they are a higher risk high reward unit as you have to get so close to the enemy you risk getting shot at by their archers on the approach but for the sheer damage you can do um, at short range, it is worth it. They can also hide anywhere, so you might want to throw them out on the flanks of your battlefield somewhere, turn them off a of fire at will, let them hide for a second, and then after the lines have met, run them in once the enemy is occupied and just watch the carnage that they can do. Now, they're arguably not as powerful as, say, the Hinny Dower of the Woodland Realm, who can absolutely just destroy entire armies with ease with their body piercing magic arrows more or less but the Gerveleg are still quite powerful archer assassins and you do get them from your tier 2 range so they are decently readily available your next unit here let me move the archers out of the way the Lothlorian March Warden same kind of thing going on they can hide anywhere that they want the Lothlorian March Wardens 9 melee 8 missile attack 14 defense they do have a shield which helps their bonus is that they have exceptional accuracy, 230 meter range, and 34 arrows. 
they are your elven ranger unit for the realm of lorian and they are deadly accurate at range not as good in melee as some of your other elite units or even your other archers but they make up for it by being deadly accurate at range and even if they do get caught in ranged combat with the enemy that shield value will help them to survive and again you will get two bodyguards of the Lothlorian march wardens simply by getting orifir uh, and Rumil, or is that his name, Rumil? Rumil and Orifin? Yeah, I think that's the right names. I could be, could be mistaken. I believe that's correct. So after you have like eight regions and 30 turns have passed, or you've taken Dorgal Durin, 30 turns have passed, you will get two generals with these guys as bodyguards, and they are just going to do tons of damage from long range. Going into our last tiers of archers, I should really have these guys farther back. The Galathrum archers, 11 melee, 10 missile attack, with 22 defense. 15 of that being armor, they are locked, very high accuracy, 220 meter range, almost as good at archery as the Lothlorian March Wardens. In fact, they actually have a higher missile attack, but they aren't quite as accurate, nor do they have the same amount of range. In fact, there's probably an argument to say that they are better just because that plus two attack is very useful on bows. Galadrum Archers, just an excellent unit. In your late game campaigns, you'll probably have full armies of just the Galathrum units, and having lines of Galathrum Archers, you will just do so much damage to the enemy. And it is such a powerful late game army. I love late game Elven armies. It just takes so long to be able to get to that point. To have these crazy, crazy powerful, powerful armies. But the Galathrum Archers are just a very welcome part of the roster. Lastly, the Barrio E. Ingolaith. We talked about these for Celeborn's Bodyguard. 16 melee attack base, 10 missile, 33 total defense. Same archery stats as the Galadrum archers, or Galathrum archers, but they are significantly stronger in melee, and they have a 6 shield bonus, higher defense skill, slightly better armor. They are absolute tanks as well as damage dealers, and for spears, that is a very, very high missile attack and very high melee attack. They are very powerful, and they definitely live up to their name as protectors of the forest, or no, protectors of the trees as it specifies there in their description and for all these fancy elven names if you go to the bottom you will find the pronunciation so Berio Ungaleth I guess you say a Ungaleth so that's how you would say their name or as I've been saying it the Berio Ungaleth e Ungaleth fancy stuff that isn't meant to be part of the English language really <laughs> that is it for your archers so now we'll talk about the melee unit so first of all do these two combined the Lorian Sentries and the Lorian Warders. These guys are more or less the same here. Your simple shield and sword or shield and spear unit. These Warders have one more defense skill, but one less attack than the Sentries do. So that's their difference there. I say in general, the Warders are going to be more useful. Having higher defense and having a unit that can stand up to wards, you're going to want them. Uh, but the Sentries aren't too bad in melee either. They'll get plenty of kills. And do note they are very fast with that 114% movement speed modifier. Now, the spears, they do have shield wall, which is another benefit to fighting against cavalry or pushing into enemy formations, while the sentries do not. So, fighting works, that's my biggest recommendation. Have the warders for the works, have the sentries for orc maulers or orc band, anything else like that. Use it even for. Orc bodyguards, they'll do okay against them. Orcwood bodyguards will outclass them, but for the most part, I would say try to get warders more often than you can get sentries until you've dealt with the cavalry threats that Dorgaldur has. Next off, we'll talk about the Girthenen. So just like the Gerbeleg or the Great Death, the Girthenen or Girthenen are the Silent Death. These guys have 12 attack, not armor piercing. 14 defense with an 8 charge. They fight nearby enemy infantry, and that is their strong point. Use them, hide them around, use them to flank into the enemy, and they will help you route off those low morale goblins. Even in front combat, these guys are pretty, pretty combat effective. I like to use them against orc maulers myself because they have that very high defense skill where they don't really necessarily have to worry about the armor piercing bonus that the orc maulers have. They make for excellent infantry blenders especially in the early stages of the campaign i mean 12 attack is very significant frightening the enemy infantry is also a very very powerful trait if you have these guys going head to head with some like murkwood uruks or 
um, orc maulers and you then flank with your cavalry nine times out of ten that unit is going to route unless they have like a nazgul general or another very high command orc general in their lines they are great for getting those orcs to run away earlier in combat than later so i'm a big fan of the girthen and they only have 40 more upkeep per turn than say the sentries they do come at a higher recruitment cost but for basically the same defensive stats you get so much more attack and so much more utility out of these guys definitely get them as often as you can and they have these cool like two-handed glaives i love that type of a uh, weapon or i just think it's it's very cool it's high fantasy but i love that so much especially the Merkwood version so next off going into the tier two first of all the sentinels of karen amroth these are your upgrades to the lurian sentries going up to 11 attack six charge and 22 defense Overall, just a very, very solid shield and, or I guess, board and so sword and board, I should say. That's the correct term. Sorry, guys. I'm all over the place lately. I I speak before I think. They're just very, very good sword and board units. They're going to beat Merkwood Uruks, but watch out in numbers. They may get still pushed back by the sheer Uruk tide that Merkwood can throw your way. And keep them wary of things like the Stellans of Dorgaldur. They won't beat them in a fight. But any other trash or mid-tier orc unit, they are going to do great against. And they honestly look very impressive. I've always loved how this unit looks. I love the green cloaks on, like, the silver scale mail that they wear. And I really like the kite shield that they use. Just a personal... I'm just a personal fan of these guys in the roster. I love them playing a Woodland Realm campaign. I love recruiting these guys during the Elven Union. Next of all, the next unique unit, Yavanna's Chosen. This is an all-female unit of Lorien Elves. And do notice that they have elven voice lines there. I do have my volume turned down pretty low. They are halberds, and they are good at their job. Nine attack, five charge. First being halberds, good against both mounts and armor with 19 defense. Nine of that being armor, ten of that being defense skill. They are just a fantastic unit. You're going to want to recruit these guys when you can. Things like Kamul Shadow Knights or Castellans, they're going to do well against Merkwood Uruks, Merkwood... Uh, do they have a halberd version? No, I think just Mordor does, but Dorgaldur gets like heavy Uruk infantry and Uruk spears. Yavanna's Chosen are going to hard counter those, especially the spears. I've noticed halberds in general are just very effective against spear units because spears typically have lower attack sets anyway. Halberds just seem to always be a good counter to spears in melee, more so than I would say like two other two-handed units or like sword and shield units. It just seems like anecdotally I find the halberds very effective in that role, so... Another just great unit to have, very elite. Going into our last two units, we'll talk about the Galathrim Guards first. More or less the upgrade to the Yavanna's Chosen. Going up to 10 attack, 26 defense. Halberts, they are locked, so they will not route. Just a direct upgrade, and I feel like I talk about what you can do with the light troops, and then I go into the next tier. It's just like, here's that same unit style, just better. And that's really what we're coming down to here. Yavanna's Chosen, but better. These guys are going to easily take down things like Trolls, Olog High. They'll probably beat Great Beats. They will they might even do okay against Mumikill if you have to fight them at some point in your campaign. Just excellent, excellent Halberds. And another unit type I'm a big fan of, Elven, Two-Handed Swordsman, the Galathrum Swordsman. 15 attack, 9 charge, 24 defense. Great in the front line, great doing shock damage. Just keep them away from things like, you know, Elephant type units. Keep them away from heavy cavalry charging into them, and they'll be just fine. Their only other weakness might be armor-piercing javelins or Isengard crossbows. Those will counter these guys at range, but in melee, they are absolute blenders. I love two-handed sword units, and the Galathrum swordsmen are no exception. So the last unit I will talk about for the infantry corps, even though they're more monstrous than anything, are the Ents. So you do get Ents as the Woodland Realm and as the Realm of Lothlorien. Ents have 45 attack, 15 charge, 41 defense, and 7 hit points. Skilled against mounts, they are excellent cavalry killers. I love using them in that role. They just say they have a movement speed of 70%, but that is misleading. They are actually quite swift on the battlefield, and they will fight to the death. And you'll only get these if you build Yvonne's Garden, and I believe you can also get them in Isengard regardless of the choice but if you do the elven standalone you can recruit them in the Yavanna's garden and i'm still like 90 percent sure you get them in isengard just by occupying it 
I could be mistaken, but that's how it was when I did my Woodland Realm campaign, and that was version 5 as well, so it should still be the same. It should be the same thing going on there. So Ents just overall very powerful. They're like trolls. They can just run through lines. They break through them. Send them onto elites. Send them to kill generals. Send them against Kamul. If you ever fight Kamul and you have Ents that late in the campaign, they're going to destroy his bodyguard. His Shadow Knights are going to get absolutely wrecked by Ents. They... Like, they're just secretly heavy cavalry killers. Like, because in, against infantry, they can only hit one model at a time, so you want them to be fighting the elite of the elite. So, that's what I'll say about the ants. And lastly, we'll get to our cavalry. This will be a quick section here. Florian scouts, not the best cavalry unit, more like your militia. Six attack, four charge, and 13 defense. So, basically the same as your Lorian sentries, just lower defense skill. Uh, but they do have the bonus of being cavalry, so... Just in general, cavalry, very powerful. Keep them away from spears, and they'll do okay. They're not the best at charging. They are meant to be in melee. Send them against things like Dorgolder archers or Isengard archers. Send them to flank, but don't send them against wargs. They will not do good against wargs or other cavalry at all. They have no bonus against those units, so keep them away. The last unit is the Heather Bin. These guys are not so much lancers as they are spear cavalry, but they do have a high charge of 9. With 18 defense and 8 attack, I guess I could say they would be Lancers, actually. They just have interesting kind of almost like Naginata pull arms here rather than proper lances. They don't have a bonus against horses or anything themselves. So again, keep them away from wargs in, you know, one-on-one -on -one combat. If you're going to fight wargs with them or other cavalry, try to do like a hammer and anvil strike on them. They do have a cool name, Mist Knights. I didn't know about that, but Mist Knights, that is pretty cool in my opinion. But I would say in general, your weakness as the Realm of Law Florian is your cavalry. You don't particularly have strong cavalry and only two units. But still, in Medieval 2, cavalry is just so, so, so important to have. It will help you win so many battles that would otherwise be impossible. Even if you just have one unit to chase down routing enemy units, keeping them away from coming back is essential to winning battles. So I'll go ahead and deploy my formation here in melee because we are going to fight our enemy who is i'm just going to say who it is it is going to be mordor so let's get these guys over there archers where are all you guys i want elbert sentinels there lothlorian archers let's just kind of spread everyone out curve leg will use you because you're very fun get the two cavalry together and i'm not going to stress too much about our formation but we should just do that and yeah, that should be fine. Let's just grab all of our infantry, grab all of our archers, and start the battle. So it looks like Mordor is going to deploy on the hill. I've given them an army that I am fairly certain I will actually be able to beat as I controlled it myself. We're going to see Black Uruk's Temple Wards. We got some Temple Knights out on the flank. Black Uruk Halberds. More Black Uruk Halberds. Temple marksmen in the front lines doing some skirmishing, a few trolls, great beasts in the back, and I had to give them Sauron himself, the very, very powerful mace wielder himself with just incredible, incredible stats, so Mordor will be played next week. Now, what are we looking at here? Temple marksmen moving up, maybe, just maybe, we should probably get our units ready to engage here. Let's bring these sentinels out. Who's in the back here? Scouts, let's bring you around the right. In fact, don't they have the cavalry on the right flank? I think I want them over here. Do we have Yavanna's Chosen? We have Galadrim Swordsmen over here. I'd like to get the Galadrim Guards to fight the trolls. But maybe, just maybe, we can try to shoot those trolls down before they get into melee with us. Wouldn't that be ideal? Order's doing is some posturing up here. Looks like we're firing at the Halberds. Now, we are very defensive in general here. All right, let's switch out to not do friendly fire, please. Let the Galadrim Swordsmen fight the trolls. Send in the Galadrim Guards. Lurian Sentries, let's hit them. Looks like we're going to get charged here by Black Uruks. Let's try to recharge them. Come on, lads. Ignore the trolls. Go into the Black Uruks. Line of Sentries is meeting the Black Uruk Calibers in melee here while the Warders are holding back the tide. Okay, where's the cavalry? Looks like the Temple Knights. Oh no, the Great Beast. I forgot about the Great Beast. That is not good. Where are the Gervaleg? Where are the Gervaleg? 
Oh, we completely forgot about those. Oh, let's get them in close range to deal with our enemies now. Like we're getting a few lines breached over here. That's okay. Set, uh, Ents, 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 I need you to deal with the Temple Knights. Pull our cavalry away, please. We're like, are getting closer. Great Beast in melee with our Halberts. Yvonne is chosen. Oh, let's charge those guys, please. Sentinels. All right, let's try to not get charged here, shall we? Like we're going to get our warders hitting melee there. That's okay. All right, Gervalek are in close range. We're going to fire point-blank volleys right at the Great Beasts. Are they actually going to fire at them? Come on, let's see what damage we can do. Armor-piercing try shots. Here they go down. Look at that damage. Oh, unfortunately, our general did die here. Who was my general? Was it was it not my bodyguard? I guess it was. Oh, he was. He just got stuck in melee there. He died very quickly. Well, there goes the Great Beast due to one swift volley from our garden. And a few more shots should take him out. I mean, these are three armor-piercing arrows at once. Come on, guys. All right, what are we doing over here? What are we doing over here? This is deadly. This is very deadly. Lurian archers. All right, let's shoot these black or calibers. We were like, I'm going to save their ammo. I'd like to hit Sauron's bodyguard with them if I can. Okay, how many archers do we have? We're actually not doing great right now. Let's switch to those temple marksmen. It might be because they just have so many temple marksmen on the hill. Where is Sauron? He's still in the back. Let's have them just stop firing and hide for a moment. Sentinels of Karen Emroth keeping the temple wards at bay here, which is good. Our scouts are more or less dead, but we do have Ents in melee taking out the uh, temple knights, so they're going to do okay. They are against Halberds, though, which isn't ideal. Firing at some Halberds over here. Let's try to take those guys out, or should we fire at the Temple of Marksmen? I feel like we should be firing the Temple of Marksmen. Galadrum Swordsmen and the Galadrum Guards are not doing so hot over here as I thought they would, but they were fighting trolls and great beasts, so maybe it is to be expected. All right, we're going to try to fire another shot here at the Temple Knights before they get into melee. Uh, looks like we're going to get hit here. That is unfortunate. We're going to lose a decent amount of, of our men here. That's okay. What can you do? I need to save some shots here. Actually, we have the Burial Eagle. Let's go take down the Temple Knights, please. Doing okay. Yavanna's Chosen are fighting the Black Uruk Halberds. Get these Heather Men away. Sentinels, take down the Black Uruks. Let the Ents please chase down those Temple Knights or anything else, please. March Wardens, let's get you guys into a loose formation. Gurdanen, let's get you ready to start doing some assassination over here. We're not doing much to... The Temple of Marksmen, unfortunately, but now we have our full battalion. They will be fighting them. These Black Uruks should go down to our Lurian Archers. Or maybe not. Those are those are just Tier 1 Archers, so they might not do that well. The enemy are badly bloody. But we are going to get charged here by those freaking uh, Temple Knights. I really need to get a unit on them because they are just running amok in my lines currently, which is not what I want to have happening. Oh, our Heather Ben got... Oh, they got attacked by Sauron. That is not good. That is not good at all. I don't have any cavalry left. Come on. Let's try to avoid that. Let's try to hit those Temple Knights. I only have 10 cavalry left to use. That is actually quite bad. Okay, we still have a decent amount of units fighting these Orc Raiders here. I think the 20 Galadrum Guards shouldn't have an issue dealing with them. Let's keep on chasing. I think we're going to route off these Black Uruk Halberds. Let's go after these Temple Wards. Actually, no, we should finish off the Temple Knights. Looks like our 20 Swordsmen did beat the Orc Raiders here. I'm going to start chasing down the enemy. Don't let them don't let them come back into the fight. We're going to need everyone here. Where are Gervaleg? I need them to start doing assassination. Jeez, those two freaking Temple Knights just running amok through our lines. Come on, Ents. Take out that last one, please. There's only one left. Come on. Surge into him, and there he goes. We're going to go run up now, engage with the Temple Marksman, while the Gervaleg get in range. Uh-oh. Yvan is chosen. Get into formation here. I need I need to side shoot Sauron's bodyguard. It's the only hope. Uh, we're doing okay. Sauron's bodyguard is relentless, so they're not going to care too much about... 
our halberd wall here. In fact, they're just taking down our halberd wall. Like, it doesn't even exist. The Yohannes Chosen got absolutely destroyed there. Okay, let's just have everyone shoot at Sauron then, because he is going to probably single-handedly take us out here if we don't start getting the Gervaleg to fire at him. We've taken down one unit from Sauron's bodyguard. He actually might be too powerful for us. Get away, get away. Oh, this is bad. This is not good at all. He still has 65. I might get destroyed by Sauron here. I probably will get destroyed by Sauron here. We don't have a whole lot left fighting at the moment. We really just have archers. Want another shot? Armor piercing volleys right into Sauron. Nope, Sauron I think is going to absolutely just have a field day here against our army. I did not bring a canner to him. Did not really fully consider his strength. So once again, I have given the enemy an army that was too powerful for my own. But Sauron is a powerful unit, so... You know, this is why the elves don't want Sauron returning. He is just insanely powerful. Let's bring in the Ents to maybe help us take him out. A few more armor-piercing volleys going into him, but he just has such crazy defensive sets. 55 defense. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking here. We are not taking out Sauron in this battle. No, we are not. It doesn't even matter that I have tri-shot armor-piercing damage. With the Gervaleg, Sauron is just that much of a beast, so... That is my own folly. I could have taken out the rest of the army if not for him. So this battle is going to be a loss, unfortunately. But it was a good show from Sauron. People joke in the Discord all the time. Oh, you can defeat Sauron with hobbits. Well, can you even hold him at bay long enough for the hobbits to do the damage they need to do when the man has 55 defense, 10 shield, 30 armor, and 3 hit points? Poor soldier. It's, it's, it's a tough one. It's a very much a tough one. We've killed six soldiers so far in this unit, and we fired at him with pretty much everything we've had. We've completely run out of armor or ammo with the Gerbaleg, and we'll now try going into melee. You absolutely need armor piercing, the old Sauron, or maybe some cavalry, or maybe some, you know, artillery. That's the only way I can see it really going well. We're going to recharge his bodyguard, and it's just not going to matter. They're relentless. Every attack they do is basically going to slay one of our Gervaleg in melee here. So, good show, Sauron. Good show. I did not prepare for you as well as I should have. So, that will do it for today's video. Again, this is a losing streak I'm having because I'm giving the enemy too much strong stuff. But until the next one, my friends, farewell.